All right, so I guess uh, we can get started uh, now. And um, this is the last chapter in our book. And um, I'm going to continue what we discussed last time regarding the summation of the forces and torques and finding uh, the acceleration of the center of gravity or finding the angular acceleration of a rigid body. And uh, this is a, a very brief recap who said, you know, if you have some, you know, random rigid body, and you have a bunch of forces applied on it, F1, F2, F3, and you know, maybe the weight. We said these forces are going to be equal to, um, uh, to this, right? So you're gonna identify where the center of gravity is, and at the center of the gravity, you are going to put MAG, and we said we are going to have IG alpha. Right, IG alpha is an inertial rotational torque on the rigid body. MAG is um, uh, simply the mass times the acceleration of the center of gravity. So these two are going to be equal to these, and you can choose some of the forces in the x direction. Right, you are going to get MAG x. If you sum the forces in the y direction, you are going to get MAG y. And then if you sum the torques about any point, you are going to take the moment arm of MAG. So sometimes, if you actually chose to sum the moment about this point. Uh, point G, then what would be the moment arm for uh, MAG? Can someone tell me? Uh, what do you guys think if you basically sum the moment about um, about this point G? Right? the moment arm for MAG would be basically zero, right? Why? Because MAG would be, uh, right, it is, this vector is passing through the center of gravity, right? So it cannot create any rotation, right? So that is that is why if you sum the moment about point G, you would get that. Um, let us, uh, there's one more thing. So regarding IG, right, or the moment of inertia. So we said uh, the definition of, Ig, right? In the case of a, uh, you know, a ring, it's going to be mr squared. In the case of uh, a disc, it's going to be mr squared over two. That is for a disc. Uh, sometimes uh, they actually give you the radius of gyration. And let me turn this off right now because I think this is better. And uh, if you, um, if they give you the radius of gyration of a disc, right? Uh, not the radius, so just the radius of gyration. In that case, your moment of inertia is gonna be m r k square. So sometimes it could be like you know any random rigid body, but you are simplifying the rotational mass of this object as m r k square, where you're basically assuming this guy is essentially behaving as as a point uh, that has this radius of gyration r k, right? And the moment of inertia for this. Uh, rigid body about this point is going to be similar, simply uh, like a point that is rotating about the radius of gyration, RK. Um, all right, so uh, that is it regarding that. So uh, let us begin and do some uh, some examples on that, right? And um, one of the things that I would like to, that we solve right now is, uh, let's do actually a, a free by diagram on a bicycle. And then uh, I want to see how you guys understand the rolling motion and the friction on you know a bicycle right so uh, so let me just draw a bicycle so uh, so this is a rear wheel and then this is a front wheel and that would be the chassis of the bike um this guy is like that and then this is where the person sits right so let's say Okay, uh, so this is a bike, right? And if, you know, if the cyclist is, um, if this guy was like, let's say uphill, right? Like that, right? How do you think the friction is going to look like on the rear wheel and the front wheel? Can someone tell me? It's uh, all opposing the motion. Great. Okay, so Alessandro, why don't you tell us um, how does the friction look like on the rear wheel? If this bicycle, if this cyclist is actually going up, 
and you were to draw a free body diagram on the rear wheel only, right? You know, neglecting the chain. How do you think the friction is going to look like on the rear wheel? Um, it wouldn't be downward, like. Uh... Uh, no. So if this bicycle is going up, then the friction on the back wheel will actually look like that, right? And if this is, you know, and one, then the friction here, um, you know, uh, if it's not, you know, the friction would, would be like that, right? We don't know its value yet, right? But we know that this is a friction on this wheel. Uh, why? Because, you know, when the cyclist is trying to, you know, apply torque on this wheel, right? Then this wheel is going to try to spin on, you know, uh, on its own. So you need to have that friction to prevent this wheel from slipping. All right. How do you think, can someone tell me, how do you think the friction or the, you know, the free body diagram would look like on the front wheel of the bicycle? Uh, no, no. So the front wheel of the bicycle, right, is not actuated, right? So this wheel is basically, is loose to rotate in any direction. And you know, when you are going with a bicycle, how does the wheel rotate? It rotates like that, right? Yes. Okay, so the only force which is applied on it, basically, the force which is actually creating that rotation is that force. Does that make sense, right? So F2 is basically, you know, if the bicycle is going forward, right, then that friction here will always actually be like that. All right? And, um, and here, basically, we have no slip, right? Then, um, you know, and the wheel is rotating like that, then therefore this is the friction. And again, that would be the friction as the bicycle is going up, basically the friction is gonna be like that, propelling this bike forward, all right? Um, now, um, you know, uh, what do you think will happen if the bicycle is actually going downward, is going downhill? Okay, let's just remove that for a second. How do you think the friction on the front wheel would look like if the bicycle is going downward? Right to left. Yeah, so it won't change, right? It won't change, why? Because, you know, think about it, right? So let's say, Basically, what is really happening on the wheel, you are trying to move the wheel on its center, right? And, you know, you are moving the wheel, right? If the wheel is not touching the ground, what happens? If you have a wheel, like you're holding the wheel at its center and then you're moving it to the right, it won't spin, right? But once you actually, you know, lower it to the ground and now you have, you are going to have, the friction is going to oppose the motion of the wheel. So essentially, you are moving the wheel to the right. The only way that you could have friction on is going back to the left, right? And then that friction is going to cause that wheel to spin like that, right? Uh, so it doesn't really matter whether the bicycle is going up or down. The friction on the front wheel will always be opposite to the motion. And on the right wheel, I'm sorry, or on the rear wheel, basically, if you are going up, obviously the friction is going to be like that, right? And if you are going down, then the friction is going to oppose the motion of the wheel, depending on whether the, the cyclist is pedaling going downward right or if the cyclist is applying the brake if the cyclist is applying the brake on the rear wheel then the friction is going to be like that right so the friction is going to try to oppose the motion of the wheel right but if the bicycle is trying to accelerate even further you are going to have a force here on the wheel right and that force is actually what is causing the f is equal to ma on the bicycle right so ultimately the bicycle is going to have like let's say a center of gravity it's going to be moving to the right with mag ultimately you would uh, that force is going to be equal to mag of the bicycle uh, but let it, let me do something and then let's analyze the rolling motion on um, on on a simple disc and then we can kind of try to revisit that and then see if it makes sense hopefully uh, then uh, let us actually uh, work on this problem okay let's say you have a disc All right, and I know the center of gravity of the disc is going to be here in the middle. And basically, I have a rope around the wheel, and I'm applying a force F over here. 
all right and i want to tell you that uh, the coefficient of static friction here the coefficient of kinetic friction is mu k and the coefficient of static friction is mu s right and i want to tell you that this wheel has a mass m and it has a moment of inertia about the center of gravity g and the gravity acts downward right and what i would like to do is i would like as a result of this force i would like to find the acceleration of point p so the main difference guys between this chapter and the previous chapter has been that before basically i gave you alpha right and i gave you the acceleration of one point on that rigid body and then i ask you to calculate the acceleration of a separate point and this uh in this chapter basically i'm giving you the external forces applied on a system you have f you could have other forces and then from these external forces we are basically finding the accelerations on various points on that rigid body so let us begin uh, so if i want to find the acceleration of point p what are the steps that I should take in order to do that. Can someone kind of like try to walk us through this? Uh, so we have to do uh, a, free we by, a free by diagram, right? And how does a free by diagram look like on this object? Mg f of friction. Uh, we have, we have exactly. So we have mg at the center. Okay, and then we have F, right? Okay, what else do we have? The friction. normal and the friction. Okay, we have a normal force, and then we have the friction. Okay, so we have two values for mu k or mu s. Which one should we choose? Our shimmy for the mu s, we will see if it will move. Here's what. No, we don't take mu s. We put any random friction. We're gonna put an unknown friction force, right? And here's what. So pay attention to this. So first of all, you're gonna put a random friction force and you are going to solve for it. Um, and uh, here's what is going to happen. So let us come in, uh, let us put, uh, you know, the accelerations here. What, what does the accelerations look like on here? What am I going to have on this diagram? MAG. Exactly, MAG at the center. And then what else? And then we have IG alpha. Okay, remember, this is very important. Yes. You always wanna have IG alpha, okay? This is basically the fact that this object has dimensions and dimensions will, are going to give you IG, right? And then only IG, right? It's not I about any other. So hello, we don't know F. So what we are going to do is, I will see we assume that the wheel is rolling, but it's not slipping. So assume no slip, right, or sliding. Okay, so if you assume no slip, it means that, you know, as a result of this force F, that wheel is not slipping. And if the wheel is not slipping, you can see that this point will have basically zero accelerations in the right direction, right? And based on this assumption we can actually relate ag to alpha right and this is how basically we can solve the problem so the first thing is you assume no slip so the wheel is not slipping you relate ag to alpha and then you will be able to solve for this value of the friction and then you test if uh, if this is actually slipping if that value of the friction is greater than mu s times n it means that your friction or the system is actually slipping and then if the system is slipping, you bring go backward and then you make F is equal to mu k times mg. And knowing F is equal to mu k times mg, so your acceleration mag is going to be very simple. mag would be equal to F minus mu k, uh, mu k mg, right? And then you will be able to solve for the acceleration. So if there is a slipping, basically, ag and then alpha are not related, right? But if there is no slipping, it means that ag and alpha will be related. Can someone tell me how? Related. No, لا, as a as a mafi slipping, if there's no slipping, the only thing that you can say, if there's no slipping, you can relate AG with alpha. This is the only thing that you can do. It means that the wheel is not slipping, then the acceleration of the center of, of the center of the disc would be related to the angular acceleration of the rigid body itself. Okay, but uh, new bar calculation as well, okay. Uh, no, you don't do, we can, no, F, 
you know, if there is a sliding, so we assume there is no sliding, right? If you assume there is no sliding, basically, you cannot say F is equal to mu S times N. Mu S times N is the maximum value of the friction force, all right? And if F is greater than the maximum value of the friction, then there is sliding, then you can say F is equal to mu K. So we're not at that step yet where we say F is equal to mu K or mu S. Does it make sense? So all we're saying is that we're saying that the wheel is not slipping. And if the wheel is not slipping, can someone tell me how may I be able to relate a G to alpha? So basically, if the wheel is not slipping, then this is pure kinematics problem, right? And I think you guys will be able to quickly tell that if I say, if I relate a G to a O, right, this is point G and then this is point O, and then that part is actually only kinematics. Here you can say that a G is actually equal to alpha R. You guys agree, right? Uh, if you say you can relate directly the acceleration of this point to acceleration of point O, why? Because I'm assuming no slipping, and if there's no slipping, point O will have zero tangential acceleration. And I know a G will only have tangential acceleration, right? Uh, therefore, a G is equal to alpha R, all right? And then likewise, if you were to calculate the acceleration of this point would be alpha times two R, right? And this is from the previous chapter. All right, guys, does it make sense? So this is a very important assumption that we're making. Okay, we're assuming that there is no slip and then by the fact that there is no slipping, then a G would be equal to alpha R. Okay, so now we got that. Uh, what we'll do is uh, we can, uh, can I actually calculate uh, can I calculate, for example, AG right now, do you think, or no? What is the actual value of AG? Well, let us use our, you know, the equations that we have, right? So if I, I can basically sum the forces on the rigid body in the right direction, and I'm going to end up with what? Can someone tell me what are, what do you get? You are going to do on the left side, right? So F, minus small f, right? So the force that you're actually are pushing the rigid body with, and it doesn't really matter where it is, right? It could be anywhere, and then you would just keep it f. f minus the friction, and again here, I don't know what is the value of the friction yet, right? f minus f is actually equal to m a g, right? Uh, but here I have two unknowns, my okay? So I have, uh, so, so far how many unknowns do I have? I have a g is an unknown, alpha is an unknown, and then the friction is an unknown right? And I have two equations. This is a kinematics equation by assuming that there is no slip. The second equation is summing the forces. What do you think the third equation is going to be? Moment about G. Exactly, you can sum the moments and it doesn't really matter about G or O. You will have a third equation and you're going to be able to solve it, right? Allah, if you choose to sum the forces in a vertical direction, yes, you will have one more equation, but you, you introduce one more unknown, right? Which is N. Right, in that case, obviously, you're going to get an equal to mg, it won't solve. So, here we will simply sum the moments about it, doesn't really matter. I think uh, if you sum about g, then you are going to, uh, you know, the friction is going to come up with you as f times r, right? But it's probably easier if we sum the moment about point o. It will still work if you sum the moment about point g, but summing it about o basically because I have n, f, and then will basically cancel out, right? So, if I'm summing this about point o, what am I going to get? Can someone tell me how would that look like? F times 2R. Exactly. So I have F times 2R. Okay. IG alpha. La, uh, la, la, la. Equal. So hello, we're done with this part, right? Now you're going to move to the right side, right? What do you have on the right side? IG alpha. You have IG alpha. Should you multiply IG alpha by some other values, like the radius or whatever? No. No, exactly. So IG alpha, you can move it anywhere that you want, right? So IG alpha. Okay. Anything else or that's it? That's it. Uh, no. So how about MAG? MAG is actually M -A -G -R. also in it. Yes. So this is point O, right? And like I said, whatever you do on this figure, you have to do on this figure. So here, MAG multiplied by R. So also the acceleration here is actually creating a moment about the point that we chose, right? So plus 
M A G times R. You guys agree? Yes. Okay. So here uh, I can basically replace A G by alpha, and you're going to end up I G alpha plus M. A G is equal to alpha R, so it would be R squared times alpha. My okay? And that is equal to how much I G plus M R squared multiplied by alpha. Okay, and you see basically, you know, uh, alpha is multiplying the moment of inertia, but it's also multiplying M R squared. M R squared has the same unit as the inertia, right? And now I can actually get the angular acceleration of the rigid body based on the force only, right? So what is alpha in this case? This, right? Two. F R divided by I G plus M R square. So basically, now you have just calculated uh, you have just calculated the angular acceleration of the rigid body based on this force. Does this make sense? If you want to get A G, all you do is just multiply uh, alpha by R, right? So A G is going to be equal to alpha R, which is equal to two F R square divide that by I G plus MR squared. Uh, can someone tell me if is this is this the final answer now, or or should we verify that it is correct? How can I verify that this answer is correct? Right, so here we, we calculated alpha, Maheke, and then we calculated AG, but we made a big assumption that there's no slip, right? How can I test and see if that disk would actually be slipping maybe, right? How can I do that? Okay, so uh, can I, how about the friction? Can I actually get, okay, I think the internet just uh, went off. Uh, can you guys still hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, so what I was saying is, um, so based on the force that we had applied, we were able to solve for the angular acceleration of the rigid body and then AG, uh, meaning that uh, if I ask you to have, you know, to solve for the acceleration of point P, you would be able to say to solve for it, but we're we're gonna come to it in a second. How do you know that uh, this assumption is correct or not correct? How do you test to to see if you will accept this analysis or maybe not? If the friction is smaller than the force. If the friction, well, first of all, do we know the value of the friction based on this force? Do I know the Mark, value of the friction? We saw. Well, we solved. We we got a g, so we can get it now. Exactly. Now we can get the friction, right? And then, if you remember, you know what I was one time mentioning in class is the friction will always be as much as the force that you are applying, right? If the object is not moving, the friction will always be as much as. Uh, the, the, the force that you are pushing, right? In this case, we had solved for the AG, we can actually solve for the friction, which is gonna be F minus MAG, right? So the difference between the force that you are pushing and then your acceleration would be your friction. And now we can actually use this value of the friction to test and then see. So we had F minus small f is equal to MAG, and now we can actually solve F, right? So F is gonna be equal to the pushing force minus your inertial acceleration, and then we already solved for AG. We said AG was equal to how much? AG was equal to 2F R squared divided by IG plus MR squared. So F minus M, 2F R squared divided by IG plus MR squared. So obviously um, what we can do here is we can factor out the force. And then you are going to end up with IG plus MR squared. And, um, and this is basically one minus, right? So uh, it would be IG plus MR squared minus MR squared, right? Because this guy is F one minus uh, two MR squared, right? One minus two MR squared. 
one minus two mr squared times f, right? So f is going to go on the other side. And the friction is uh, going to be equal to uh, how much in this case? It would be equal to uh, F, right? So IG minus MR squared divided by divided by IG plus MR squared. Okay, uh, so we have uh, IG plus, uh, so again, this guy is here, let me just factor it out. So I can take one minus, Okay, all right, so now we have the value for the friction, okay? And, um, you know, on the exam, for example, or, you know, in the assignments, you can solve for that. And how do we know if the assumption is right? You want to check if the value that you just solved, if F is greater, right? Greater or equal to mu S times N, right? And we know N is equal to mu mg. Yes times mg. So if it's actually equal to me as mg, then the assumption is right. So maybe we shouldn't put the equal. My and if it's equal, it is at the verge of slipping. If f is greater than me as times mg, uh, what? How can I continue the problem from here? If f is greater than me as times mg, so based on this value, right? So the force is obviously your input force, which you know. These are the geometry of your wheel. Uh, if f is greater than USMG, can someone tell me how would you do this? Let's see the value of mu k n. Okay, so so then how would you find your your you know remember the goal was to find a g and then alpha, okay? So how do we find a g and alpha from there? So I'm gonna re quickly redraw the free by diagram. So we had f. So if F is greater than that, so I'm going to update the friction force and I'm going to say this guy is actually equal to mu k times n, my k l e mu k times mg, right? And yes. This is mg, and we said this guy is equal to how much? Mag here and ig alpha. So remember, the goal for me was to find ag and then alpha, right? And if I find ag and then alpha, I would be able to find the acceleration of point P. This is the point that I'm trying to solve, right? But before finding the acceleration of point P, I need to, to get the acceleration of point G and then alpha. I need to know the acceleration of one point on that rigid body. So based on this new friction force, how can I solve for AG? Oh, we get AG another time. That's uh, F as you, mu K, MG. Exactly. So again, you sum the forces, right? You're going to end up with F minus mu K, MG is equal to mag right so here basically ag is going to be equal to f minus m uk mg divided by m so here we sold for the acceleration of the center of gravity very quickly and by the way guys you know what we're doing is when you are doing this basically this equation is replacing what is replacing the kinematics equation okay so ag is equal to alpha r is no longer valid why because the disc is slipping right and uh, the disk is slipping then ag is no longer equal to alpha times r right and it could be slipping so it could be you know for example like translating right it could be like simply like translating where alpha would be zero and then ag would actually have some acceleration okay so here is ag is equal to alpha is that still valid no right why because it is slipping so we can't use that equation how can i find alpha right now then How can I find alpha? Some moment about uh, O. Yes, exactly. Some moment about O or G or, you know, whatever that you want. So we can sum the moments about point O. And uh, you are going to F times 2R, right? It's going to be equal to Ig alpha plus mag multiplied by r. Okay, so f times two r is equal to ig alpha multiplied plus mag r, and I already know ag. I can basically solve for alpha. 
And let us do this uh, very quickly. So we have F times 2R is equal to IG alpha plus M AGR. So R AG, which is F minus UK MG, and then divide that by the mass M. And then M and M is going to cancel out. So you have IG alpha plus F R minus mu K M G R. And if you bring F on the other side, so you don't have only F R plus mu K M G R is equal to IG alpha. So your angular acceleration is going to be equal to F R plus mu K M G R divide that by IG okay so basically guys what we just did is we just obtained the angular acceleration right and the acceleration of the center of gravity based on here there is a slip there is a slip on the wheel and then uh, and then we had the other two equations where we had no slip okay and we obtained alpha was equal to 2F over R, divide that by IG plus MR square, and then we had AG was equal to 2F R square, divide by IG plus MR square. And then we solve this for the case of there is slip, uh, no slip. Okay, guys, are you guys uh, familiar with, do you guys understand what, you know, what we're dealing with here? Um, is this all clear? Uh, now, if you want to find the acceleration, yes. How did we get alpha and ag? After ten equations. Which one here? Yes. We calculated this earlier. I'm just rewriting this, right? I'm rewriting those that we did earlier based on the no slip ag is equal to alpha r. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Okay, guys. So now the point is, if we want to get the acceleration of point p, can someone tell me how can I get the acceleration of point p at the beginning of the motion? So as soon as the force is applied, how do you get the acceleration of point p? we can relate it to ag exactly bravo yes so we can use kinematics right so ap is equal to ag plus alpha cross rp with respect to g right minus omega square times rp plus g right so you know there's a good engineer is someone who can like quickly retrieve you know what equations are should apply where and then how to really have a kind of system level understanding of what is happening in the system, right? So here we know we can use kinematics because we know the acceleration of one point, AG, and then, you know, in the case of no slip, you would use this. In the case of the wrist slip, you would use this, right? And then on the exam, obviously you would stop. So I would you assume no slip, right? And then uh, if your friction was less than the maximum friction, maximum static friction, then you would stop here, right? You, you don't need to find it, you know, uh, as if there is a slip right but sometimes the problem could be given to you in the opposite direction where you know they will tell you like i'm throwing a ball and uh, like in the case of a bowling ball right in the case of a bowling ball right when you throw it right on the aisle basically it's gonna uh, initially it's gonna be slipping for sure right and then at some point it will be continue to to roll right it will start basically rolling and then i encourage you guys to solve that problem in your assignments so anyway so here we have alpha right from here and we have AG as well from, from here. And Doctor. Omega square would be zero in this case at the beginning of the motion. Yes. Uh, Doctor, in the award sheet. Yeah, I, I I think the connection is breaking up uh, with you, so I, I just couldn't hear you. All right, guys. So we're gonna solve uh, one more problem, and uh, the problem is the following. Uh, let's say you have a bar. Let's say you have a bar like this, and the bar basically is pinned about this point. It's basically free to rotate about this. And if I yes. 
سوري سوري كان بدي اسالك بس نحن بنعمل تشيك اذا الفريكشن اكبر من يو اس ان واذا طلعت اكبر بنكمل اذا طلعت اكبر يس yes, بتكمل بيكوز ناو يور انيشال اسامبشن اوف نو سليب از انكوركت امم واذا طلعت اصغر خلص يا اذا اصغر بيزيكلي ذير از نو سليبينج اوكي Okay, so how about this problem, guys? If I tell you you have this problem, you have a bar, uh, center of gravity of the bar is here, G, and as soon as you release that, I would like you to find the acceleration of, this is G, of point P here. How would you, how would you do that? Okay, um, so you have this bar, right? And then we release it. As soon as we release it, I would like you to find the acceleration of point P, right? Uh, how do you solve this problem? So um, the first step that we said, right? After you write your name, you're gonna do a free body diagram, right? So you're gonna do a free body diagram of the bar, right? And then how does a free body diagram look like at the bar? So you always have mg at the weight, right? So if this is g here, then you know at the center of it, then we are going to have mg like that, right? And then at this point here, basically you have uh, you have n, right? And uh, you could also have other forces, right, on n. So you know if this is a pin basically right it means that uh, you have n and maybe you actually have you know another thing that is q okay and um, how about on the acceleration diagram what do you think you are going to have on the acceleration diagram okay what do you guys think you're going to have on g you're going to have what? MAG. MAG, right? So, Hone, you have MAG is going downward, right? And then here we're, we're assuming that you're calculating this right when there is no uh, there is no uh, angular velocity, you know, Init just at initially, right? But if you actually are releasing that at some at some point, basically, AG wouldn't be like that, right? A G will actually have a component like that as well, my okay, which is m omega square, my okay. So just make sure you are, you know, you're understanding what is happening over here. What else do I have here? I'm going to have always rotational moment, my okay, who I G alpha. Okay, so how? Uh, so the goal here is we would like to find A G, and we also like to find alpha. How? Uh, how would you do that? How can you find A G, and how could you find alpha? And um, I think the easiest way here is to sum the moment about point O, right? If you sum the moment about point O, right? What do you get out of that? So mg, what is the distance from here to here? So if this whole thing is L over two, L over two minus L, L over two three minus L is L over six, right? L over two minus L over three will be L over six. So you're going to summing the moment in this uh, clockwise direction, you are going to end up with mg multiplied by because I'm summing the moment about point O, then this force Q and N is zero, right? Are creating no moments. And by the way, the force Q is how much? Is zero, right? Because initially you have no accelerations in the right. So this guy has to be zero, my K. Okay? This guy would only be there if there is an acceleration. So, okay, so mg multiplied by L over six is equal to how much? Mag. Uh, L over six. Exactly, MAG also L over six. And that's it, right? No, alpha. We have IG alpha, exactly. What was the IG for uh, a linear bar? ML over 12. ML squared over 12, right? Multiplied by alpha, right? So, okay, so this is one equation and it has two unknowns, AG and alpha. How, okay, how can I solve AG and alpha then? We sum forces. If you sum the forces, basically, okay, let's sum the forces and then see what happens. If you sum the forces in the vertical direction, you are going to end up N minus MG is equal to how much? 
minus m a g minus m a g so this equation will, will allow you to solve for n right but it won't give you a general alpha so guys remember this okay every time where you want to relate ag and alpha you have to look at kinematics in the case of no slipping so when we have no slipping right ag and alpha are directly related like this guy is not sliding when it rotates etc so how can i re relate ag with alpha ag equals to alpha r alpha ag is equal to alpha but what are in this case l over six l over six exactly okay and you guys know why we have this equation. This equation is like AG is equal to AO plus alpha cross RG with respect to O minus omega square RG with respect to o. omega square is zero. This is only the vertical component of AG. You, you, it would give you this. So now that you have that, you can actually put it here and you can solve for uh, alpha from here, right? And then once you know alpha, you can get AG, you can get N, you can solve all the equations, all the problems. Okay, so let us do this and then get, get done. So mg L over six is equal to M. So AG is alpha L over six. So alpha L over six squared plus ML squared over 12 times alpha, which is equal to alpha M L over six squared plus ML squared over 12. So now we know our alpha is gonna be equal to MG L over six, divide that by alpha ML squared over 12 plus M L over six squared. Okay guys, so now you calculate alpha. From alpha, you can get AG. Just multiply this guy by L over six, right? If you wanna get AG, it would be equal to MG L over six squared, divide that by, uh, what what is what okay so there's nothing here right divide by ml over six squared plus ml squared over two okay you got ag now you can basically get the normal force right or you can get the acceleration of this point that we are trying to find how can i get the acceleration of point p right now kinematic yeah kinematics or we can just say ap so if i'm taking point o it's going to be equal to alpha multiplied by this lens right times 2 l over 3 right and then if i'm looking at the vector that would be in the j direction right you get the same result if you do ap is equal to ao plus alpha cross rp respect o minus omega square rp respect okay so here, here what's the value of omega What's the value of omega? So, okay, so as soon as you let go of the bar, omega will be zero, right? As soon as you let go of the bar, omega is going to be zero, and then you, that is why I'm getting this, right? If omega is not zero, like, you know, if you're finding the acceleration of point P after some time that you've released the bar, then it would be something else. And for this, uh, in the homework assignment, guys, there's a problem that has a bar like this, and the bar basically is sitting on the edge of a wall and they give you the coefficient of friction and they tell you at what angle, basically the bar will actually begin to slip. So I, I would like you guys, I encourage you guys to solve this problem in preparation for the final exam. So they ask you at what angle theta, the bar will basically begin to slip. And I'm pretty sure you guys, you know, based on what we discussed regarding slipping, you find, you know, you have a friction force, etc., and uh, you can find the angle theta based on that so i encourage you guys to solve this problem on your own any more questions guys regarding this problem or are we good kinematics equation ao equals zero yes ao is equal to zero yes okay. so we have guys one more lecture wednesday and uh, we may have another lecture also after that uh, you know to just solve more problems and uh, and that would be it guys so we, we are going to be done with our course uh, after basically two lectures okay so we have a lecture regular lecture on wednesday and uh, we will have one more problem solving and then we have a lecture uh, you know i think the tutor is also going to give you guys also a session where he would solve problems and that would be it <laughs>